truly you know I, uh, having been through the entire process of uh, firstly making a representation and then uh, being in the court for the hearings in respect of faceless appeal filing the petition and being in the court knowing the reaction of judges and the department submission i truly feel that the new scheme which has come out they have taken a lot of input from the petitions and arguments petition filed by the chamber and the arguments taken therein so kudos to chamber of tax consultant for taking this stand and moving forward without any hesitation with this i'll start my presentation a short and small presentation on the faceless appeal scheme is my presentation visible yes 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 <laughs> thank you so everything started in the midst of lockdown the honorable prime minister with this uh you no know, thought process of honoring the honest came out with the faceless assessment and faceless appeal scheme the faceless assessment scheme came in somewhere 13th of august 2020 and thereafter in one month time on 25th of september they had announced the faceless appeal scheme the objectives on paper appeared to be superb imparting greater efficiency transparency and accountability by eliminating physical interface between the taxpayers and tax officers of course the Uh, the hidden object behind coming out with this scheme in fact not the hidden object because they have spoken quite vocally about this that the object of coming out with the faceless assessment and faceless appeal scheme is to eliminate corruption which yes is one of the solution to eliminate corruption there is no second thought about it the purpose and one of the features which they say is that it will lead to objective fair and just order only time will say in fact you know the number of petitions filed across the high courts in india against the assessment order passed under faceless assessment scheme shows the quality of assessment which has been made of course that is not the complete picture but we have seen lot of hiccups in so far as the faceless assessment is concerned similarly they say that it will there will be an ease of compliance for tax payers there will be no human interface transparency efficiency functional specialization improvement in the quality of assessments and expeditious disposal of cases <clears throat> with this now i'll break my today's talk into three parts the first will be the appeals under the traditional mechanism what used to happen in the good old days right up to september 2020 how we used to appear before the commissioner appeals and what are the procedures laid down in the act the second part would be the scheme which was announced in september 2020 which was challenged by the chamber of tax consultant the old scheme and the new scheme which has now come out in december 2021 and there are substantial changes as compared to the old scheme so there are three parts to today's talk firstly coming to the traditional mechanism of course it requires no introduction cit appeal is the first appellate authority to adjudicate disputes between the ssc and department part a of chapter 20 deals with appeals to cit appeal almost all the orders passed by the assessing officers or joint commissioners or the junior officers are appealable to cit appeal it is a quasi judicial authority which means though it is a functionary or a limb of the income tax department it is there to adjudicate the disputes between the ssc and the department in a fair and independent manner without having that background in the mind that i am an employee of the one of the party to dispute that is the income tax department. so yeah they have to act independently and they have to determine or dispose of the appeals in a fair and judicious manner section 246a of the act enumerates the order which can be challenged before cit appeal section 249 prescribes the form of appeal and limitation of course few years back they had made compulsorily e filing of the appeals before cit appeal and section 250 prescribes the procedure in respect of such appeal So section 250 is the crucial section because that is what has been tinkered with in the new faceless schemes. Section 251 states that the CIT appeal shall fix a place and date of hearing and shall give notice of hearing to the assessee as well as to the officer against whose order the appeal is preferred. So plus section 250 subsection 2 states that the assessee as well as the AO have a right to be heard at the hearing by an authorized representative. so cit appeal not only hears the ssc but he also hears the assessing officer who has passed the order practically it never happens only in few cases rarely we have seen the assessing officer 
appearing before CIT appeal making his submission. But the procedure prescribed is he is sitting in a chair of a judge and he has to adjudicate disputes between the SSC and his own department represented by the assessing officer, which shows that he is a quasi judicial authority to be acting in a fair and judicious. Section 256A provides that in every appeal, CIT appeal where it's possible may hear and decide such appeal within a period of one year from the end of the financial year. So this is the traditional concept of hearing. Now, practically everybody must have appeared after the assessment order is received. I file a form 35 grounds of appeal statement of facts, make the payment of fees for filing of appeal. And I upload the appeal online. After some time, I receive a notice of hearing. Once I receive a notice of hearing, I know I have to appear before the commissioner appeals. I prepare my submission. I prepare all the documentary evidences which I have to file. I'll put forward my case. I argue and appear personally before the commissioner appeal. After hearing me, after considering my submission, he has to pass an order, which is a speaking order, which is a reasoned order. What order he can pass is prescribed under section 251, that is the power of commissioner appeals. I can raise an additional ground before him. I can raise an additional claim before him. This claim can be a new claim, which is raised for the first time. The courts have upheld the power of CIT appeal to entertain an additional claim. I can file additional evidences before him subject to the conditions of rule 46A of the income tax rules. So this is how the procedure before the commissioner appeal used to happen. The only hiccup or only the negative part was sometimes I had to wait outside the office of commissioner appeals for my turn. Sometimes he was not present and there used to be unnecessary a uh, visit to the office of the commissioner appeals. That was the uh, hiccup which one used to face in the physical era. In the year 2020, they had come out with the old faceless appeal scheme. I'll refer to it the old faceless appeal scheme, which was notified in 2020. Before that, the schemes have been notified under section 256B, 6E, and 6D of the Act. This was introduced by Finance Act 2020. Now, section 256B is really the section which empowers central government to come out with a scheme for disposal of appeals by commission appeals. If I may just read the section, the central government may make a scheme by notification in the official gazette for the purposes of disposal of appeal by commissioner appeals so as to impart greater efficiency transparency and accountability by a eliminating the interface between commissioner appeals and the appellate in the course of appellate proceedings to the extent technologically feasible optimizing utilization of resources through economies of scale and functional specialization introducing an appellate system with dynamic jurisdiction which appeals shall be disposed of by one or more commissioners so section 256B, firstly, power given to central government, which means this is a delegated piece of legislation. Power to legislate, everybody is aware, is with the parliament. The parliament makes law. But some trivial issues, some non-essential legislative functions are delegated to central government, to the executive, which is then you know, notified by way of a notification. So all your income tax rule is a piece of delegated piece of legislation. According to the parliament, appellate procedure under the Income Tax Act, including how it should be heard, heard, how the hearing should take place, what submission has to be filed, when personal hearing has to be granted, when physical hearing has to be granted. All this is not something which is very, very essential legislative function, something which can be delegated to the central government. Therefore, power was delegated to central government. This was the first point of challenge by the Ch Chamber of Tax Consultant. You cannot come out by way of a notification, a, a appellate scheme which changes the entire game by way of a notification is not permissible. That was our first point. Two, the power was to come out with a scheme for the purposes of disposal of appeal by commissioner appeals. So you make a scheme for disposal of appeal by commissioner appeals. Whereas they came out with a scheme, the old scheme, where the jurisdiction to dispose appeal was given to national faceless appeal center and regional faceless appeal center. So this was pointed out by chamber that this is going contrary to section 256B because appeal cannot be disposed of by an administrative authority. It has to be disposed of by an appellate authority. Lastly, the elimination of interface between commissioner appeals and the appellate is only to the extent it is technologically feasible. 
even the section does not envy such complete debarment of physical hearing in some cases where it is not technologically feasible to argue orally virtually or by way of written submission you have to make a departure and you have to grant physical hearing so these are the three essential elements of section 256p okay now please go to section 256c which gives them a lot more power than 6p they say that central government may for the purpose of giving effect to the scheme made under subsection 6p by notification in the official gazette direct that any provisions of this act relating to jurisdiction and procedure for disposal of appeals by commission appeals shall not apply or shall apply with such exception modifications and adaptations as may be specified in the notification so there is a complete income tax act 1961 chapter 20 part a deals with cit appeal they are to come out with a new appeal scheme for the purpose of new appeal scheme they can notify which sections of the income tax act will apply or will not apply or will apply with such exception modification and that notification and that power was given to central government <clears throat> and if one sees notification number 77 of 20 one will find that they had amended in fact most of the provisions of the income tax act so as to make it compliant with the faceless appeal scheme in fact section 250 subsection 2 says that the following persons will have a right to be heard as a c through his authorized representative whereas the faceless appeal scheme stated that you will not be orally heard you have to make a request the principal chief commissioner in charge of relevant rfac regional faceless appeal center will consider your request we'll see if your request fits within one of the prescribed criteria only if it fits then only we'll grant you personal hearing otherwise we will dispose of your appeal by way of your written submission so my right to be heard prescribed under section 250 subsection 2 was taken away by the faceless appeal scheme and in fact this was their argument before the honorable bombay high court so this was the magnitude of power which was granted of power granted on the central government so as to give effect to the faceless appeal scheme <clears throat> it is under this subsection 6b and 6c that they had notified notification number 76 and 77 of 2020 dated 25 september 2020 <clears throat> now i am going to the second part of my talk which is what was the old faceless appeal scheme which was issued by notification number 76 of 2020 and 77 of 2020 which was issued under subsection 6c of section 250 of the act i don't know what happened to them a scheme of such wide magnitude such wide impact was firstly based upon or modeled upon the faceless assessment provisions without understanding the mood difference between an assessment procedure and appellate procedure so if you read the faceless assessment scheme and the faceless appeal scheme one will find that almost similar provisions are there without understanding the mood difference between what is an appeal proce appellate proceeding and what is an assessment proceeding second thing most importantly whenever they come out with a scheme of such wide impact we have seen that they first throw the draft scheme before the stakeholders for consultation the stakeholders make a reply make suggestions they consider that they modify it and then they come out with the final scheme that is how a scheme is made a full proof scheme but surprisingly in what hurry we don't know they came directly came out with a faceless appeal scheme which was you know saddled with so many problems and so many issues it was without even consulting the stakeholders and in fact in one of the hearing before the honorable supreme court in relation to transfer petition relating to faceless appeal scheme the honorable judge of the supreme court pointed out to the department that we are not doubting your intention the manner in which you came out with the scheme without consulting the stakeholders was not correct you could have consulted some of the stakeholders like icai like the chamber of tax and various other organizations could have taken into account their suggestions and you could have come out with the scheme so this was the peculiarity of the faceless appeal scheme <clears throat> some of the essential features are it had a national faceless appeal center which was granted the jurisdiction to dispose the appeal a regional faceless appeal center which was again granted the jurisdiction to dispose the appeal and various rfacs had various appeal units and this appeal units comprised of one or more cit to 
an SSE would not be aware who the CIT appeal is, but certainly the CIT appeal is CIT appeal is aware who the SSE is. Three, there was a draconian power or a provision in the old scheme wherein one CIT appeal to whom the case is allocated randomly through a random allocation system, he would pass a draft order. That draft order would be reviewed by another CIT appeal or it would be reviewed by National Faceless Appeal Center and thereafter the final assessment order, final appeal order would be passed. So for the first time, a concept of peer review was introduced in an appellate scheme, in an appellate structure, which was completely ridiculous. Of course, they had prescribed that the scheme should not apply to some of the uh, cases like serious frauds, major tax evasion, sensitive search matters, international tax and black money. Some of the other uh, features of the scheme were the additional evidences were uh, uh, allowed to be permit, uh, allowed to be entertained at the instance of the assessing officer. So the assessing officer can make a request to CIT appeal. So please ask the assessee to produce this evidence, which were not there before the AO during the course of assessment questioning. This is never seen or never heard of. Then they have a provision for penalty, levy of penalty for non-compliant. So if the CIT appeal issues your notice of hearing, and if you don't reply, he can levy penalty for non-compliance. Now, this is again going against the provisions of the Income Tax Act. This is an appellate pro procedure. I as an appellant may choose or to appear or to not to appear to prosecute my appeal. If you issue a notice, I may reply. If I don't reply, you issue me second notice. Still, if I don't reply, you pass an order ex party. There is no question of leaving any penalty for non-compliance. This is my appeal. I have preferred an appeal. <coughs> Then the rectification part is concerned. They had, you know, rectification proceedings also had some other features. The communication was by way of electronic board. Most importantly, no personal appearance. So no physical hearing and oral hearing, as we have discussed, only I can make a request. That request will be considered by the chief commissioner or director general in charge of regional faces appeal center. He may approve the request for personal hearing. And if it is approved, such hearing only by view of video conference. So no physical hearing as well as no personal hearing. So these are the issues which we have just discussed. Physical hearing gone, oral hearing at the discretion of department. There is a provision for review of order. The entire scheme is by view of a delegated piece of legislation. The penalty proceedings for non-compliance. There is no such provisions in the Income Tax Act. Rectification proceedings. Generally rectification proceedings, if an officer passes the order, I have to apply under section 154 with the same officer and he will consider my rectification request. Even in the court of laws, in the tribunal or in the high court or Supreme court, the very same judge or the very same members or the very same judges, they hear the rectification request or the miscellaneous applications. But here they have a provision that even the rectification application will be randomly allocated to any one CIT appeal in any one jurisdiction. He may be a different office. So that was according to me, not correct. One had to read the additional ground and additional evidences in a prescribed form. And the SSE or the CIT appeal can dismiss my appeal on the ground of delay, on the ground of non compliance with section 249 4, which is payment of tax on returned income before filing of appeal. Or he may dismiss my application for admission of additional ground and additional evidences without even granting a hearing. So I have to make a request, I have to give reasons. He will put the reasons to the AO or the department for their rebuttal. After receiving their rebuttal, he will just accept or reject. So he will not hear me again. So this is something where the uh, opportunity of being heard is not there. Most importantly, there was no provision in the old scheme to issue a notice for hearing. Please give your submission. The scheme directly started with if the NFAC requires or if the appeal unit requires any documents, they will issue a notice. What if they don't require any document? They will not issue a notice. So this was, you know, uh, the biggest, the first point of a pro appellate proceeding is I have to issue a notice of hearing to the SSC and ask him to make his submission. <clears throat> that first step itself was missing in the scheme. According to them, the first step was only if NFC requires document, they will issue a notice for hearing. 
so the concept of hearing and as a consequence appeal is dying many all of us have appeared before the commission appeals and we have seen that not everything can be explained by view of written submission the concept of hearing is a golden concept since old age age old days where uh, it's very easy if there is one to one confrontation it's very easy to explain if there is if there are doubts harbored in the minds of appeal he'll put forth the doubts i'll clear the doubts i can refer to various papers if it's bulky if it's voluminous if there's a big paper book filed especially in case of transfer pricing cases where i have filed lot of paper books consisting of the financials of the comparables if i want to refer to one page the other page the physical hearing concept becomes important not all cases you can switch over to a hearing by view of written submission of course there are also other type of appellants who only wants to file written submission and go away but that concept was still prevalent in the old system so the concept of hearing per se was dying in fact this concept of faceless has now been even stretched to uh, the income tax appellate tribunal which we will discuss later on there was a fear of compromise of independence because the first appeal unit when he is preparing the draft order he will hear you he might give you personal hearing he will consider your written submission then they may go for review and the review officer may be some different officer that different officer he will not even hear you while he may change the decision taken by the first officer if he changes the decision it goes to the third officer the third officer also will not hear you then he'll confirm the order passed by the second officer so though you have argued successfully before one officer the order is passed by some other authority again this was going contrary to the judicial sense or common sense that person who is hearing has to pass the order how can somebody else pass an order so this was one of the plank of one of the major plank of challenge it's a quasi judicial authority the department's officer is one of the person who is listening the dispute there is a fear of compromise he is tilted towards the department now if it is reviewed by two officers of the very same department and it's a faceless system we will not even come to know who the officers are there will be no accountability at all the assessees would get an apprehension that my appeal is not going to be disposed of in a fair and judicious manner there will be a compromise of independence if i don't know who the cit appeal is the department very well knows anything can happen behind my back i don't know who the officer is who will review it i don't know he is not even contacted me there is no notice of hearing by the review officer so completely you know it was going haywire only positive outcomes i can see is that the traveling hassles and the bureaucratic issues are resolved so i sit in the comfort of my office and argue from my office whenever they say you log in i will log in i don't have to wait outside the office of the cit appeal so i don't have to travel to the office of cit appeals for this purpose so these were the major issues and therefore chamber at tax consultant filed a writ petition which was later converted into public interest litigation various grounds were raised it's still pending before the bombay high court we have not yet not yet disposed of and all over india various writ petitions were filed on the ground that you are not granting me hearing the oral hearing is at the discretion of cit not even the cit appeal but his administrative head the regional faceless assessment center chief commissioner you cannot take away my right of being heard as a result the income tax department had filed a transfer petition before the supreme court where the chamber of tax consultant had intervened because our petition was pending here therefore the first time on 1st of october they made a statement that we are going to have a relook at the entire faceless appeals scheme and thereafter the hearings took place in case of chamber's case before the honorable bombay court and where again they were repeatedly making the statement that we are revising the scheme we are revising the scheme so that is how the new scheme has come into picture on 28th of december 2021 by way of notification number 139 of 2021 some substantial changes have been made in the new scheme as compared to the old scheme most of the issues which i have just pointed out have been addressed in the new scheme and from the scheme it can be clearly seen that the petition of things or the petition filed by ctc and the points raised by ctc have been taken into account while drafting the new scheme two uh they had earlier issued two notifications 76 under subsection 6b and 77 under subsection 6c 
So 76 came out with the entire scheme and notification number 77 gave out the sections which shall be which shall be applicable or which shall apply with such modification as may be necessary for the purpose of the uh, giving effect to the face test application. Instead of that, now they have come out with only one notification, notification number 139 of 2021, which is issued under both subsection 6b and subsection 6c. So they gave out they, they gave the entire scheme in one notification, as well as they stated that. All the provisions of the income tax act shall apply subject to the provisions of this scheme. The new scheme has superseded the old scheme after saving the actions taken or not taken under the old scheme. And the effective date of the scheme is from the date of publication, which is 28 December 2021. These are the, some of the initial features of the new appeal scheme. Now I have prepared a chart comparing the traditional method, the first faceless appeal scheme and the new faces appeal scheme on some of the critical aspects. <clears throat> Firstly, with whom is the jurisdiction to dispose the appeal? Under the traditional approach, the jurisdiction was with the commissioner appeals, which was a quasi judicial authority. But under the first faceless scheme, the jurisdiction to dispose the appeal was with national faceless appeal center and regional faceless appeal center. In fact, the National Faceless Appeal Center, if you look at the composition of National Faceless Appeal Center, they don't have even one CIT appeal in the entire center. So it was purely an administrative body, which was granted the jurisdiction to dispose the appeal and which we have earlier discussed in contravention of section 256B of the act, because 256B stated, you come out with a scheme for disposal of appeals by CIT appeals, not by some different authority like NFAC. And the regional faces appeal center had various appeal units, which were given the functions of hearing the SSC, drafting the order, review of the order and passing of the order. This was one of the major challenges raised by the uh, chamber of tax consultant. Now under the new scheme, the jurisdiction again goes back to commissioner appeals, a quasi judicial authority. Most importantly. We have seen the faceless assessment orders and the faceless appeal orders. Those are signed by an officer sitting in national faceless assessment center and national faceless appeal center. Now under the new scheme, the order has to be signed by the concerned commissioner because you keep secrecy or you hide the identity till the time order is passed. Once the order is passed, there is no point in keeping the secrecy. So now you will come to know who is the concerned commissioner appeal who has passed the order. The RFAC regional faces appeal center as a unit has been removed per se. this concept of RFAC has been removed in the new scheme. They say we don't require RFAC. Any job which was required to be done by RFAC will now be done by NFC. And the concept of appeal units have now been replaced by CIT appeal. So there are no appeal units. Everything is to be done by CIT appeal. In fact, now the role of National Faces Appeal Center is very limited and restricted to being a postman. If there is anything which commissioner requires, it will have to inform NFAC and to maintain the uh, faceless element of the scheme, the NFAC would then issue notice to various persons for their reply. Similarly, an assessee will file a reply, which will go to NFAC, which will be then sent to the respective commissioner appeals. So the job of NFAC has now been limited, restricted to being a licensing agency, just to protect the identity of the commissioner appeal. The procedures are prescribed in case of traditional approach. The procedures are prescribed under the Income Tax Act 1961. Under the old scheme, it was by way of notification number 76 and 77, a delegated piece of legislation. And even the new scheme is by way of a delegated piece of registration. This is something which is still hurting us. You cannot come out with a complete appellate scheme by way of a piece of delegated piece of legislation. Because we have seen how you draft delegated piece of legislation. It's only when somebody had to go to the high court, somebody had to go to the Supreme Court that you realized after one year, after disposing 56,000 appeals that no, no. The scheme is bad in law. It requires some substantial changes, not some changes, some substantial changes. So a delegated piece of legislation, a strict no, insofar as I am concerned, 
let us see we are expecting that they may bring the entire appellate scheme by way of a section in the income tax act in the budget uh, for the coming year if if uh, you know you may remember that even the first faceless assessment scheme was by way of a notification under 143 3a and 3b of the act thereafter by under the taxation relaxation act they introduced the entire faceless assessment scheme by word in the form of section 144b of the act so our contention is same this cannot be by way of a delegated piece of legislation you can amend the act and get this scheme in the act then we are happy since it is no longer a delegated piece of legislation opportunity of being heard before dismissing on the ground of delay in the traditional scheme yes cat appeal used to confront you there is a delay please justify and if you are not able to justify these to dismiss it but under the new old scheme what the provisions read on paper i have to file a, a request for continuation of delay giving out the reasons those reasons would then be sent to the ao or the national faces assessment center for their comments and after receiving the comments the cit appeal will directly either admit the appeal or reject the appeal. so this is where you know the opportunity is not granted after receiving the comments he has to hear me out and give me an opportunity before dismissing my appeal on the ground of delay same position has been continued in the new scheme as well we are not yet clear and it appears because in one of the uh, cases i have personally seen that on the ground of delay appeal is dismissed merely on the basis of the the, uh, the reason given in the appeal memo they had not asked us for any further justification so yes we fear there will be no opportunity before dismissing on the ground of delay <coughs> Section two forty nine four states that you have to file an appeal, or one can file an appeal only if tax on returned income is already paid. However, if you don't pay tax on returned income, and if you still want to file an appeal, you can approach the commissioner appeal, and commissioner appeal may uh, condone this type of uh, a defect in the appeal, and he may still proceed with the hearing. So, whether any opportunity will be granted before dismissing under section two forty nine four. under traditional approach yes under the old scheme same provisions as dismissing the appeal on the ground of delay in fact under the new scheme i didn't find a single provision dealing with dismissal of appeal under section 2494 so this element per se is missing in the new scheme <clears throat> whether a notice of hearing will be issued under traditional approach yes we already discussed under the old scheme notice issued only if appeal unit requires some information now that has been amendment amended in the new scheme and the new scheme says that once the appeal has been filed and the appeal has been allocated to any particular appeal a cit appeal then he will ask the nfac to issue notice of hearing hearing by way of written submission is allowed in all three formats but oral hearing by way of video conferencing which was there in the traditional approach under the old scheme you don't have any right you can only make a request which will be considered not by your cit appeal use hearing it will be considered by his boss his administrative authority ccit in charge of rfs so in short there is an appeal before cit appeal in which assessee is the appellant and the respondent is a tax department through the assessing officer another officer of the department that is ccit in charge of rfs he will decide whether oral hearing will be granted to the assessee or not as good as a respondent saying that no no you don't grant hearing to the appellant so this was clearly uh, i mean nobody would have thought of this such kind of provisions absolutely ridiculous i around 30 40 petitions filed across india on this count itself and now they have amended the law if i ask for a hearing it is mandatory for the commissioner appeals to grant me they cannot reject so in all the written submissions which an assessee is filing or an appellate is filing right now to make a request for oral hearing via video conferencing if you make a request he cannot reject he has to grant so what was the second fear was even under the faceless assessment they are not granting oral hearing because they say only if your request fits within the prescribed criteria will grant you hearing and they have issued an sop which nobody you know most of the people don't even know they have issued an sop which says not even the officers know that only if there is a factual dispute will grant you an oral hearing 
many orders have been passed without granting oral hearing no court but the matters have been taken to the high court and the high court has finally most of the high courts have in one voice stated that or held that was if a person ask for oral hearing you have to grant oral hearing without any question ifs and buts they have a right to be heard assuming you are not being granted hearing at the faces assessment level even under the faces appeal scheme you are not granted hearing now we are coming with the faceless scheme under for the uh, itat hearing an assessee will not be heard by any of the fact finding authority and there was an apprehension that his voice would be first heard by the high court and high court will only entertain if there is a substantial question of law so this was the major difficulty which people were facing and fortunately the department has recognized and they have amended the scheme and said no no we will grant you oral hearing by way of video conference now there are you know uh, the hearing which has taken of course cit appeal no hearings would have taken place only in one or two cases we have heard hearing has taken place but under the assessment scheme we virtual hearing cases in some cases we can see the officer who is appearing and in some cases you don't even see who is the officer so uh, that may be a concern but the department has made a statement in the court that in case of virtual hearing the officers would show his face because of course uh, i don't know how practically is feasible but in the high courts in the tribunal level we come to know from the judges uh, body language that what suits what is pleasing the judge which argument is not pleasing the judge if i don't know his face i don't even know if he is listening to me or his staff is listening to me for just for the sake of formality of giving a person hearing somebody is sitting behind the computer and just flipping the pages i don't even know if he is referring to the same pages so there is no confidence which is inspired in me because of such kind of scheme so the the department has made a statement in the categorical statement in the court that no no we will show our face i have personally experienced two hearings in one case he did not show me the face in the second case he showed me the face and he was interacting he was so that was a meaningful hearing physical hearing of course on the traditional approach there is a physical hearing under the old scheme there was complete negation of physical hearing this was again one of the major grievances there are some cases which would require physical hearing voluminous documentation lot many factual details involved see for example you know uh, there are 20 25 grounds of appeal i have filed a paper book consisting of documentary evidences invoices proof running into thousands pages it, it becomes more easy if i appear physically and i can point out so you know plus if there is an intricate question of law i want to refer to various sections of the income tax act companies act general clauses act etc it becomes easier if it's a physical hearing therefore complete negation of physical hearing was something which we had challenged in fact even section 256b we have discussed did not envisage complete negation of hearing they say only to the extent technologically feasible now under the new scheme fortunately we have accepted that part that virtual hearing would be granted if asked for and virtual hearing would be only via video conferencing to the extent technologically feasible so if it's not technologically feasible they have to grant you a physical hearing would there be any administrative interference in the hearing process or the appellate process under traditional approach on paper there was no interference we don't know what used to happen behind the scene you know uh, uh, they had come out with the cbdt central action plan somewhere in the year 19 where they in black and white they had written that the cbdt had written that if you enhance or if you levy penalty we will give you additional points clearly there was an interference which was taken uh, challenged by the chamber of tax consultant before the bombay high court and the honorable bombay high court had struck down that so on paper there is nothing but we don't know but in case of the first faceless appeal scheme the jurisdiction to dispose the appeal with nfac nfac had so many powers they could have directly sent the re, the submissions to the assessing officer without even the cit appeal requesting that the nfac had the power to adjourn the proceedings without even cit appeal stating that so so many powers with nfac completely there would be an administrative interference in fact the next point review of order if the tax effect involved in the appeal was less than a particular threshold then the order had to be compulsorily reviewed by nfac an administrative body using risk management strategy 
so an administrative body had complete power to interfere in the hearing process which was pointed out by us in our petition and now in the new scheme we are witnessing that they have completely ironed out all the interferences now nfac only will act as a licensing agency or as a postman just to communicate between the assessing assessee and the citm nothing more nothing less they cannot have any say in the process of appeal disposal review of order of course under the traditional approach there was no question of review of order whatever was passed by commissioner appeals was accepted but under the first appeal scheme mandatory review by another commissioner appeals if the tax effect crosses a particular amount if the tax effect is less then nfac shall review applying the risk management strategy and the risk management strategy means they want to standardize how can there be a standardized approach in disposal of appeal it will vary from facts to facts and how can an administrative body review the order of a quasi judicial body completely unheard of concept of peer review so there is a concept of review in judicial system if a commissioner appeal has passed an order the uh, department as well as the assc can get it reviewed from tribunal if the high court has passed the order i can get it reviewed by, by the uh, supreme court after the order is passed not before passing the order at the draft stage that was clearly uh, 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 demolishing the concept of independence of quasi judicial authority so this was our major plank of challenge and fortunately under the new scheme they have completely done away with review there will be no review and appeal will be assigned to one commissioner appeal you will not know faceless he will conduct the hearing he will pass the order he will sign the order so that is the end of the matter there will be no review completed this review provisions have been removed of course we have discussed that uh, penalty for non appearance there is no such penalty under the traditional approach to the best of my knowledge but there is one which is prescribed under the old scheme as already discussed it's my appeal i have a choice to prosecute it or not to prosecute if i don't want to prosecute i will not appear and if i don't appear you cannot levy penalty on you have to pass the order dispose of the appeal in next party manner there is no question of levy of penalty in an appeal at provisions so if i file an appeal before the tribunal and if i don't appear tribunal cannot levy penalty for non appearance they might simply say assc is not interested in prosecuting the appeal and we are disposing the appeal on the merits of the case looking at the records available before us so this is something which is not heard of and this still continues in the new scheme penalty for non appearance so this is something which one has to take care additional evidence at the instance of department generally there is no provision in the income tax act either enabling this or either you know specifically prohibiting them from uh, asking for additional evidence but traditionally this the practice has been followed that the ao cannot ask for any additional evidence and when the assc wants to produce any additional evidence i have to go through the strict litmus test prescribed in rule 46 i have to justify in one of the four conditions prescribed why additional evidence is ought to be entertained by the commissioner please why could not be filed earlier what was the reason for not filing it earlier etc no such condition for assessing office so a typical example which comes to my mind is ao in a hurry passes the order he makes the addition he has no time to go through the evidences evidences so he has not called for the evidences some mistake on his part i go to cit appeal saying boss he has not even considered this evidence that is okay but now the ao wants to strengthen his order so he will ask the cit appeal you please call for this evidence that in effect amounts to extending the time limit to pass the assessment order so according to me since it is an appeal by the assc there should not be any additional evidence at the instance of the department and if at all there is one then they should also strictly go through the provisions of rule 46a they should justify why this was not called for during the course of original assessment proceeding and then only it should be entertained and this provision of additional evidence at the instance of department has been continued in the new scheme as well rectification of order if say for example cit appeal 8 mumbai disposes of my appeal 
there are some mistake apparent from report i will file a 154 application before citp late he will grant me hearing he will pass the office i will not file a 154 application before citp 9 i will file before citp 8 which means traditionally the person who disposes of the appeal is given the right to rectify the order because he is aware or seized of the issue same thing happens before the higher judicial forums like the tribunal the same bench which has heard the matter will hear the ma miscellaneous application or the say in the high court the same bench which hears the matter will hear the review petition but here under the old scheme which is now also been continued under the new scheme a rectification request will be randomly allocated to any cit appeal who will dispose of the rect so person who has not heard the appeal who has not disposed of the matter he will dispose of the rectification application this is something which is not pleasing to a person's mind of course there is no written law in this regard but as a matter of practice as a matter of judicial procedure same person has to hear who has heard the appeal do you have a right to file additional ground additional evidence yes it was there in the traditional approach on a traditional approach i can file additional ground additional evidence uh by way of a plain paper application in case of additional evidence i have to give justification while i am while i am giving additional ground and additional uh, additional evidences and for additional grounds we all have the judgment of supreme court in jute corporation supreme court in case of national thermal power corporation we have the bombay high court uh, in case of prithvi stock brokers that you can raise an additional claim before the citp which is not raised before the officer that survives even under the new scheme there is no doubt about it but now if he does not want to entertain my additional ground additional evidence there is no provision for granting me hearing before rejecting my application same as rejection of appeal on the ground of delay plus they also say that the additional evidences and the additional grounds have to be filed in the prescribed format which is yet to be prescribed which also had been uh, the provision in the old scheme and they had not prescribed how i have to file additional ground additional evidence so this is something that before rejecting my application i don't know whether he will grant me a hearing on stay of demand the courts have accepted that even cit appeal has power to stay the demand and that a traditional approach since i know who the cit appeal is i can just go meet him file my stay application he will pass an order staying the demand or not staying the demand but under the faceless scheme since i don't know my officer i don't know where is he is sitting where do i file my stay application so this remedy of stay application before cit appeal uh, becomes little uh, dizzy it is not available it is not clear where do i make it should i file it with nfsc principal ccit nfsc if yes it will it be allocated to any commissioner appeals if yes will he grant me a hearing no procedure prescribed under the old scheme and no procedure prescribed under the new scheme. so this is something which they will have to look forward to in the to amend the scheme to you know make room for stay of demand same case with early hearing what if i want an early hearing i can meet the commissioner of appeals and he would say no you go to this principal commissioner he had a jurisdiction i will go to that principal ccit he will grant me early hearing or not but another the faceless appeal scheme i don't know where to make an application fortunately under the new scheme they have come out with a notification or an order saying that uh, the early hearing applications made to principal ccit nfsc shall be adjudicated in the following manner firstly if the tax demand is more than 1 crore then it has to be heard on a priority basis if the tax refund is more than 1 lakh it should be heard on a priority basis senior citizen case would be heard on a priority basis and if there are court orders it will be heard on a priority basis and last criteria is where there are genuine where there is a genuine hardship faced by the ssc then they can grant us early hearing so i see that one can file an early hearing application with the principal ccit nfsc but i don't see way to how to communicate with him i don't have his email id i don't have his address and everything under the faces appeal scheme every communication is by way of portal and in the portal until and unless they issue me a notice i cannot sue him to make any submission or any request or any letter that is again the second biggest problem of the faces appeal scheme and i can file a reply or a request only after they issue me a notice i think this is my understanding till that if there is any amendment in the uh, new portal where they allow you to file even without their request then i am yet to be updated on that coming on the communication part 
if the ciitpl wants to issue notice of hearing or if he wants to communicate the order it is to be by way of email or by way of post under the first faceless scheme and the new faceless scheme it can be by way of three modes under the old faceless scheme by way of email by way of uploading on the portal or by way of an update on the mobile app mobile app of course that route is still not uh, available because they have not come out with a mobile app all three modes are followed by a real time alert so mere uploading on the portal will not have it should be by way of a real time alert in my personal opinion even mere uploading on the portal is not valid it has to be by way of email on my email id post same mode of communications have been continued in the new scheme as well however there appears to be a some typographical error in the new scheme because when they say it should be followed by real time alert that part followed by real time alert is attached to clause c which deals with mobile a uh, notice issued by way of mobile app so it appears as if by way of email uploading on the portal and uploading on the mobile app followed by a real time alert so real time alert is not required if there is an email or uploading on the portal clearly a typographical error the you no know, if i read it strictly it means merely putting on the portal amount to service which is not possible it is in violation of the information technology act 2000 you have to give it to me at my designated address which is my email address or which is my uh, postal address you cannot just put it on some random software some random portal saying no no once i put it there it amounts to service that cannot happen i want it on my email it has to be served to me on my email so this is on the communication aspect so these are the major areas of concern for the traditional approach the old scheme and the new scheme coming to some of the other issues which arise because of the new scheme of course i am not going through the basic procedure involved in the new scheme because it is same so uh, if there is an appeal which is pending before any cit appeal it will be randomly allocated to any one appeal unit or a cit appeal at any place in india they will issue notice of hearing to file a written submission and documentary evidence which you want to rely upon if you want an oral hearing or to make a specific request please hear me orally by way of video conferencing if you feel that virtual hearing by way of video conferencing is not technologically feasible in the facts of your case please make a request for physical hearing you can make a request of course physical hearing is at their disposal and then they'll hear you they may ask for if you file additional evidence additional ground or if you file some uh, other details they may put it to the ao ao may reply back they may call for details from the ao they may call for details from the ssc they may call for details from the third party they may ask the ao to produce some remand report and after considering everything they have to pass the order same as the traditional approach to only difference is i don't know who the officer is i don't have to personally visit it is only sitting at my office i have to argue the matter so that is the mood difference now now there are some other issues which are uh, important so firstly they made a statement in the high court that under the old faceless appeal scheme from september 2020 till december 2021 they have disposed of some 56000 appeals now interestingly the appeals have been disposed of even without there being any mechanism for video conferencing even without prescribing the circumstances under which oral hearing will be granted even without prescribing the threshold limit for review of order compulsory review of order nothing has been prescribed and they have disposed of 56000 appeals now the issue is in those appeals the ssc might have filed an appeal before the tribunal or the department might have filed an appeal before the tribunal <clears throat> what is the fate of such appeals or of such orders which are disposed of under the old scheme of course the new scheme comes with it supersedes the earlier scheme but it comes with a saving clause that the supersession shall be except as respects thing done or omitted to be done before such but you would have seen that there is substantial sea change between the old scheme and the new scheme a new scheme is a completely uh, not completely transparent but a lot more transparent than the old scheme there is no review of order mandatory hearing less administrative interference by nfsc so an ssc may very well be aggrieved that boss you have disposed of my appeal under the old scheme which you have substantially amended which means that the old scheme was completely flawed one i want my appeal to be disposed of under the new scheme 
you can very well take this argument before the ITAT and the ITAT may remand the matter back to the CIT able to dispose of under the new scheme. Of course, practically nobody will do why to increase litigation, why to go back and come back. But this argument is possible and they cannot hide behind the savings clause saying, no, no, whatever is done is done that they cannot do. If a person raises this ground, it has to be taken into account. <coughs> Two, under the old scheme as well as under the new scheme, para 3 is there, which says that the appeals under the faceless appeal scheme would be those appeals as may be notified by the board. So board will state which appeals will be disposed of under faceless scheme and which appeals would not be disposed of under faceless scheme. On 29 December 2021, they have come out with a notification saying all appeals filed under 246A and 248, except those in the central charge and international tax charge will be disposed of under a faceless appeal scheme. Now, what do you mean by central charge and international tax charge? I don't know. There are no such charges insofar as CIT appeal is concerned. What I know is that there is a central charge for the assessment purposes and there is an international tax charge for assessment. So it is so vaguely worded. What meaning one can derive is that all the SSEs which are under the central charge and international tax charge, their appeals would be disposed of not under the faceless scheme, but norm. But if you are assessed not by central charge or international tax charge, then your appeal should be disposed of by the faceless appeal scheme. To give an example, in your case, your local jurisdictional AO has received information and satisfaction note under 153C of the Act and he himself issues 153C notice for six years. Your case is not centralized. The jurisdictional AO conducts the assessment. He passes the order and now you are in appeal. Those appeals have to be disposed of under faceless scheme and not by the jurisdictional commissioner in a physical manner. This is what I personally feel. Having read this term, this is my personal interpretation. Most importantly, under the new scheme, okay, you have specified which appeals will be disposed of under faces appeals. But under the old notification, they have failed to notify which appeals would be disposed of under faceless appeals. There is no notification under para 3 of notification number 76 of 2020. An RTI was filed and in response to RTI, they have not been able to clearly specify which is the notification and which are the appeals to be disposed of under faceless appeal scheme. Which means all the orders passed, 56,000 orders passed under the old faceless appeal scheme are non-est, are void ab initio or bad in. Of course, taking such argument would again throw you back to the faceless appeal scheme before the commission appeals. But yes, this is how the, uh, the government has worked in the last year. They have not specified anything and they have just disposed of appeals randomly. Communication from the side of the department is by way of three modes, which we have seen. But most unfortunate part is communication from the side of the SSC is only by way of one mode, which is by way of uploading on the portal. Under the traditional scenarios, so we could have personally handed over the details to commissioner appeals. We could have given in tapal or we could have done by way of registered post. So if this mode is not available, I could do in the second mode. But another facial appeal scheme, only if the portal works, only if the portal allows me to upload something, I can make my communication. Now this is a serious difficulty, especially now and every now and then the portal faces some serious issues. One is not able to upload the appeal. One is not able to upload some documentary evidence, etc. And therefore, my serious suggestion would be that they should come out with some alternate mechanism. You cannot just keep an SSC at the mercy of the portal. And you should give them some second opportunity. So my suggestion would be if a tax department can open up one help desk or one or two help desk at each of their Iker Bhavan or their, or their Cortilia Bhavan or at all income tax offices for assisting the assessees to communicate under faceless assessment scheme and faceless appeal scheme. In fact, I had received good query from a person that a farmer on transfer of his agricultural land, which was reported in his ITS detail or AI report or whatever it is, 
suddenly got communication on his portal or his where where i don't know got a communication which was not communicated to him by way of post on his address nobody looks at the portal especially such kind of farmers whose income is not chargeable to tax everything went in ex parte manner and huge demand was raised in such type of cases let me point out that the sop is prescribed by the department i think 23rd november 2020 they have prescribed the sops in case of a non compliant assessee that is an assessee who has not responded sops require the faceless assessing officer to send information to the jurisdictional assessing officer and the jurisdictional assessing officer has to depute an inspector or has to communicate to the assessee and making him aware about the assessment proceeding this is the sop prescribed in the uh, 23rd november sop transfer of appeal so para 52 of the old scheme stated that at any stage of your appellate proceeding the principal chief commissioner in charge of nfc can transfer your appeal from faceless jurisdiction to any other commissioner of course of course with the approval of cbdt that power is still continued but with some modification now that power would be exercised in accordance with section 120 of the act section 120 deals with transfer of cases jurist appointment of jurisdiction so apparently it will be exercised by the board unless board notifies that nfc will exercise that power what remains a mystery is under which circumstances this power will be applied under what circumstances they will transfer an appeal to another up cit appeal whether it will be from faceless to faceless faceless to jurisdictional in a physical manner nobody knows whether on the request of assc can they do this nobody knows so this is something which will one one have to see in future what happens in this para 52 of the scheme we have already discussed the guidelines for priority disposal of appeals which has come from 29th of december they have issued various notification for one for setting up of nfac under the new scheme which is order 3 dated 29 december notifying appeal units order 4 redesignation of appeal units as cit appeal order 5 and then notification conferring jurisdiction on various cit appeals in various uh, various headquarters in various area so these are the four notification which have come out to my knowledge <clears throat> the only problem which still remains is delegated piece of legislation we have to wait and watch for the budget if this scheme gets converted into a provision of the income tax act we will be very happy but if it still continues a delegated piece of legislation i am personally not happy because you know uh, let me just take 2 minutes here last 5 6 year we have seen this trend whenever they make an amendment in the act firstly the language used is you um, know uh, the quality of language and quality of drafting has no slide there is no second thought about it but in most of the amendments they have reserved some powers to the central government they have reserved some notification or rule making power to central government section 4549b central government will come out with rules so uh, faces assessment faces appeal central government will come out with notification at each and every most of the stages icds started as icds icds they will say that icds will be notified by the central government by virtue of that icds they overrule most of the judgments delhi high court say no you cannot do this it's an essential legislative function only parliament can do this a central government or an executive or cbdt by way of notification cannot do or perform an essential legislative function in my personal understanding laying down an entire appellate procedure one of the major element of income tax act cannot be by way of delegated piece of legislation to bring out a faceless scheme to bring out the provisions of how hearing is to be conducted how to file my submission how to communicate cannot be by way of a delegated piece of legislation legislature realized in context of faceless assessment scheme and they have amended it and brought in by way of act i hope that they will come out with the faceless appeal scheme in the income tax act which i think will solve major issues which chamber has raised of course some of the peripheral issues raised but that can be taken care of by way of appeal to itat provided itat is not faceless which is the next point that even the itat is now there are provisions in the act to even make itat faceless that will be the the darkest hour in the history of the income tax litigation the last fact finding authority and no of course nobody uh, no the itat does not need any introduction their orders are 
mostly accepted by the high courts <coughs> and if it is not heard personally but it's in a faceless manner it will be a serious issue for the assessees is what i want to submit that is it from my side so far as the new faceless appeal scheme is concerned only one last point provisions of the income tax act 246a 248 251 252 250 251 etc will still continue to apply even in case of new faceless scheme act still remains the provision still remains the scheme is merely supplementing it though they say that the provisions of the act shall be subject to the scheme actually it is the other way around the provisions of the eem shall the scheme shall be subject to the provisions of the act that is the whole reason why we are saying that you come out with a scheme not by way of a notification but by way of an act so that it becomes easier for the court to interpret it this is a tax payer charter which i generally highlight it in all my sessions please remember these are your rights and liabilities and these are what you supposed to do thank you so much for a patient sharing and i shall be happy to entertain any queries in this regard ashok ashok mehta ashok bhai हेलो हाँ हाँ बोलो अशोक भाई कैन यू टेक द क्वेश्चंस प्लीज या देर आर देर आर फोर क्वेश्चंस एप्लीकेशन फॉर स्टे पिटिशन बी एड्रेस टू होम इन फेसलेस सीआईटी अपील आई एम रियली नॉट अवेयर हु शुड बी एड्रेस टू बट माय पर्सनल सजेशन वुड बी यू फाइल इट टू ऑन द ईमेल एड्रेस ऑफ नेशनल द प्रिंसिपल चीफ कमिश्नर ऑफ इनकम टैक्स इन चार्ज ऑफ नेशनल फेसलेस अपील सेंटर and let him dispose of okay uh next is uh, what about the notice is issued by nfac and submissions have been made in the old scheme but the order is passed or not uh that he is not specified if the order is not passed uh, will the it order is not passed and now your appeal would be heard under the new scheme all the appeals pending as on 28 december are to be heard under the new scheme they have to follow the new procedures in the cit appeal uh, who is in charge or uh, he has been allocated the case he will dispose of the appeal without there being any review of the order without any interference by nfc uh the next question says that what about cases for which orders have already been passed under the old scheme is there any remedy available uh, for to get into the new scheme? yeah you have to file an appeal to itat against that order you have to point out to the itat that she was they have substantially amended the scheme it was a completely flawed scheme i don't know who has passed the order who has reviewed the order how much interference was there i am not convinced the scheme has not inspired any confidence in me i have agreed please send it back i think tribunal should take this positive further if cit appeal order passed under the old scheme has been set aside by itat to cit appeal it goes it back be... to national faces appeal center okay okay uh if up, the next question says that if appeal was being filed in the last hour uh at the time fi- available for filing appeal mm. but verification happened 30 seconds after 12 at night mm. because of which the appeal has been filed after the due date mm. because of this in appeal memo it was not stated that there is delay in filing appeal now what remedy can appeal dismissed without being giving opportunity of being heard so it should not be dismissed uh because uh, if the appeal has been uploaded really verification takes 30 second later then possibly the cit appeal would understand it will appear see the the presumption would be that he will behave in a fair man judicious manner and if he disposes of the appeal on the ground of delay only on the ground that you have verified it 30 seconds later then in all you know in most probability he will be fired he will not take that risk of course it's a technical issue and therefore he should entertain uh so there are some uh, questions in the chat box also mm, mm. if appeal was being filed in the uh, so same question is in the chat box i'll not repeat it mm. uh daran i had a question what mm. uh, what is the procedure for remand report so uh, i file additional evidence mm. will the remand go to the assessing officer how will it be done and who will and what if there is a remand uh, uh, remand already done uh, in the physical era and the remand report was not received uh, how will these appeals be disposed of frankly even the department is not aware what to do firstly 
remand report will be called from national faceless assessment center or from the jurisdictional level nobody is sure there is no guideline on this aspect so according to me a remand report should be called from the jurisdictional level so mm. that a person can appear before him and can make him understand but there are uh, there is a, a circular or an order internal instruction that if the cit asks for a remand report it will go to national faceless assessment center and the review team i think review unit of the national faceless assessment center shall conduct the uh, procedure call for the information and submit the remand report so i am not sure where it will go in fact i am not sure that after 148 notice has been issued the assessment order has to be passed by the jurisdictional level or by nfsc i am not sure if the order has been set aside by the itat to the ao for fresh consideration the order has to be passed by the jurisdictional level or nfsc not only me not even the department is sure we have to just see how so, it happens uh, does it does uh, shouldn't be represent in this dharan we have to certainly represent in fact i would even suggest you please file an rti and get a clarification okay. where do i go because i have seen some cases where reassessment orders have been passed by jurisdictional level and i have seen some cases where reassessment order have been passed by the faceless officer i have seen some cases where the set aside order have been passed by jurisdictional level and in some cases set aside order have been passed by the faceless officer so there is no clarity even the department is not sure either a representation should be made or the clarification should be sought from the cbdt that where should i go and what if my appeal is stuck for 5 years because of the remand report who should which door should be knocked the jurisdiction levels or the faceless officer so these are something which you know one should get clarity so i have a case i i, I that was the same thing so i have a case where my remand report has not been coming for for last 5 or 6 years Mm. and uh, suddenly i have got a notice from faceless appeal saying that you make submission whatever you want to after 5 years very well that we have to make a submission huh. and we have to say that this was the we have made our submission this is our submission and then the cit appeal had asked for a remand report which was sent to the jurisdictional level the remand report has not come to my knowledge if it has come to your knowledge please share it with me so that i can give my rebuttal okay okay yeah so uh, yeah we need to do an rti or uh, make a representation to this aspect most certainly yes yeah most certainly uh what to do in case we need to take cross examination of third party will be done uh, through video conferencing to the extent technologically feasible okay okay uh yeah uh, so uh, uh with regard to uh, the questions there is one more question by uh, one more person uh application for rectification of for order passed under nfac to whom such application can be made is there an a no provision under the nfac scheme sometimes the submissions made in portal is not considered by the cit appeal Correct. that the ssc has not responded and the says that ssc has not responded to appeal and disposed of natural right, with the, against the appellant remedy for the same hmm. no 154 can be filed or you can challenge it in an appeal to the higher appellate forum saying it is not considered therefore the proof of uploading on the portal becomes important yeah so there is uh, one person who is asking nothing is heard from cit appeal after making submission since 2nd october 2021 in case of demand of rupees 120 crores no appellant order is passed till now so you must have made a request for oral hearing and they don't have a system in place for granting the oral hearing and that is the reason why they are not passing the order and in such cases my uh, request or suggestion would be that uh, now they'll press you for demand they'll ask you to pay 20% which comes to 24 crores most certainly the client will not pay you will have to run to the high court to get a stay of demand and to ask the high court to direct the department to hear the matter in the most earliest possible manner okay uh, can you throw some light on video hearing options practically under faceless appeal as well as faceless <coughs> assessment scheme so i have not practically appeared under faceless appeal scheme because they still don't have that facility available they are developing that but under faceless assessment scheme certainly i have appeared and most of the people might have appeared in some cases they show their face in some cases they don't show their face in some cases it appears that it is for you know more or less a formality i am appearing and nobody is retorting no questions no counter questions nothing is happening so one sided thing 
and in some question one of my hearing experience was very good i was raising issues and he was asking me doubts queries so it was a meaningful hearing which generally happen which should happen so this is the you know experience which everybody will have if he doesn't open his video you can ask him to please start your video i'm not for any other purpose but i want to know his facial expressions or his body language and two you have a right to get the recording generally they send it after the hearing after uh, 24 hours i have seen that yeah so what is the procedure under the scheme for withdrawal of appeal where the issue under appeal has been rectified in under section 154 will a submission to the effect uh, that ground is not being pressed is uh, in view of rectification suffice very uh, very tricky question ideally uh, uh, you should make an application whenever you get the notice for hearing make a request that this has now been rectified i don't want to press the hearing but there are judgments to the effect that an appeal before cit appeal cannot be withdrawn because cit appeal has the power to enhance the appeal so this one will have to take care of while uh, making a request uh, that is only what i could say yeah. if the cit appeal is yeah yes. so cit appeal in personal hearing remanded the matter to assessing officer what yeah. is the fate of this appeal since no notice is received by from assessing officer on the matter is pending since last 4 years so my personal suggestion would be file a request to jurisdictional level national faceless assessment center and national faceless appeal center all three as authorities together saying this is what has happened please dispose of the appeal at the earliest after getting a remand report so i think all three authorities should and you write that cc mark to nfac cc mark to nf nefc so that you know all the appeals all the authorities are aware that we are going yeah and this is a gray area and this is an area where one should make a representation to cbdt please, please come out with a guideline what should be done in such kind of cases where remand report has been asked for or the appeal is stuck for so many years pending for so many years what should be in fact i don't know whether even they would have uploaded because i remember one of the cases in 2016 had argued before the tribunal set aside to cit appeal i thereafter yeah, never received know. any hearing from cit yeah it has been uh, lost somewhere i don't know whether they would have uploaded on the portal so that it is randomly allocated to one cit appeal i also don't know that so it is it is at, in such kind of cases i think it is it should be the ssc who should be proactive and follow up with the department you cannot always blame the department they have a lot of work they have a lot of papers and they may miss out one or two cases or three or four cases then the ssc should be proactive and should make a request and should follow and if ultimately if still if they are not you no know, uh, if they are not listening then you don't have any remedy but to approach the cbtt one or the high court directly and if you approach the high court i am most sure that the high court will take them for a task virtual hearing is done but link to download video uh, recording not shared how to request the same and to whom no you have to request to your officer only and if there is no uh, option available online to make a request you have to make a request to the jurisdictional assessing officer and still if you don't have that option is not listening file an rti with cbdt national faces assessment center and with your jurisdictional level i in one of my client had filed a rti with national faces assessment center and they were lost because they don't have any information authority in nfac they don't know whether this communications are to be revealed whether these are secret communication whether i should reveal the identity and they were just playing you know dodgeball they are throwing my request from one officer to another another to third officer so they are completely lost what should happen in case an rti request is filed to an nfc but you don't have any option you have to do this yeah uh, uh dinesh bhai uh, there are some people who have raised hands uh how is one mr lakhani is asking that cit appeal faces order passed on 29 12 whether the same is valid in view of new scheme 2812 was the when the new scheme was notified but para 3 a notification under para 3 came only on 29 december i don't know what date according to me he should not have disposed of on 29th of december he should have allowed you a hearing under the new scheme before passing the order now once he has disposed of uh, the for oh, the ssc uh, would have to then file an appeal to the tribunal and take it to the tribunal and then argue that he could not have passed this order but all these arguments would be futile because then they would throw you back to the cit appeal you have to again argue before the cit appeal. better when gets the case heard by the tribunal <clears throat>